You are listening to a Higher Things production. Higher Things is a 501c3 nonprofit organization whose mission is to make the gifts of Christ Jesus known to youth and young adults through gospel rich content like you are about to hear. Consider joining our supporters who make this ministry possible by donating at higherthings.org slash giving or by clicking the link in the show notes. And now, Higher Things presents The Uncultured Saints with Pastors Eli Leedsow and Harrison Goodman. The yeah. Gospel of St. Mark, uh, <laughs> the, the fifth chapter, we're picking up at verse verse 21. Jesus, Jesus on a boat. All right. Um, and when <laughs> Jesus, being he, had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered about him being Jesus, and he being Jesus was beside the sea. Then came one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name, and seeing him, he fell at his feet and implored him earnestly, saying, My little daughter is at the point of death. Come lay your hands on her that she may be well, be made well and live. And he went with him. And a great crowd followed him and thronged about him. And there was a woman who had a discharge of blood for 12 years and who had suffered much under many physicians and had spent all that she had and was no better, but rather grew worse. She had heard reports about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. For she said, if I touch even his garment, I will be made well. And immediately the flow of blood dried up and she felt her body that she was healed of her disease. And Jesus, perceiving in himself that power had gone out from him, immediately turned about in the crowd and said, Who touched my garments? And the disciples said to him, You see the crowd pressing around you, and yet you say, Who touched me? And he looked around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. And he said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. And while he was still speaking, there came from the ruler's house someone who said, Your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? But overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the ruler of the synagogue, Do not fear, only believe. And he allowed no one except Peter and James and John, the brother of James. And they came to the house of the ruler of the synagogue, and Jesus saw a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. And when he had entered, he said to them, Why are you making a commotion and weeping? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. But he put them all outside and took the child's father and mother and those who were with him and went into where the child was. And taking her by the hand, he said to her, Talitha kumi which means little girl i say to you arise and immediately the girl got up and began walking for she was 12 years of age and they were immediately overcome with amazement and he strictly charged them that no one should know this and told them to give her something to eat this is the word of the lord thanks be to god <clears throat> that's an immediate least there at the end it's, it's just a little mark immediately yeah immediately, immediately. All right. There's yeah. There's a lot of stuff happening here. What's uh... yeah? It's like it's a side quest, and then it gets another side quest. It's like watching The Mandalorian. That was a dumb joke, but I made it. Um, I never got into it, man. I got, you never watched I got, The Mandalorian? I got into like I got four episodes deep, and I was like, oh come on, do really? something already. It was great. Oh, it was it, no. that that was a nostalgia show. Like they 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 got the the vibe. You know what I mean? Not fast enough for me, at least. That that's how Star yeah. Wars worked. Yeah, like the only cool stuff that happened, they made no big deal of, and and every minor thing was a huge deal. Like like Luke just walks in and sees his uncle and aunt like burnt to a crisp, and he's like, "Well, this is <laughs> this is what it is. Guess I better go to this bar where they play weird music." Like I mean that yeah, not a big deal, but yeah, um, the, every other thing I don't know. Anyway, um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, stupid Mandalorian. What is it? Is, so, it? is that a baby Yoda or is it just uh, – is it like uh, – The is Mandalorian is the guy. The baby Yoda is the baby Yoda. Is it actually – is it Yoda or what are they? Are they Yodas? Well, no, that's his name. So, the, But is that baby Yoda? His his name is Grogu in the story. Okay. So, so that's what? why everybody calls him baby Yoda because that's a stupid name. Grogu. Um, Fair yeah, enough. but you can't say to a child your name is stupid, um, <laughs> at least if the child can control the force and like, I don't know, do stuff to you. But so last thing, because I, I was all, I, I, I didn't I didn't watch it because it was too boring. <clears throat> What type this is of- going to be the most letters we get, what and it's not about <laughs> theology. It's about your opinions on the Mandalorian, and uh, this I, is okay. it, it, what oh. type of alien are they? I don't know. So okay, they doesn't answer that because every other alien Chewbacca, you know what he is. And there's Ewoks. What is he? There's Wookie. He's a Wookie. 
Okay. I, I was just testing you. So you know, I mean, all of these other things, but you still don't know what Yoda is? Like Yoda doesn't have a I name? I don't know. It doesn't mean that nobody knows. It just means that I don't know. Somebody give I, us the answer. I know in, about Ranger Rick. In a year uh, and a half kids. when you're watching this, somebody give us the answer. Tell me about tell me about tell me about Jesus and Jairus. There's a lot that's going on here, and it's, I don't know where I don't know where to start. Um, because, like you said, it, it seems to be kind of like this weird little side quest type of thing that Jesus isn't. He's not. Was looking, it painful for you to say side quest? Yeah, I did. It was. I thought uh, you you had to work up to it. Oh, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. Just tamper down my pride just a little bit to say that. Um, it's not like Jesus is, is looking to do this, although he doesn't often look to, to, to heal people. Uh, they usually bring people to him. Um, so that's not odd here, but it just, just kind of pops out of nowhere. Um, it is interesting that uh, you got uh, – he's, he's crossed the boat – or sorry, crossed the lake again, right? If you remember last time, he was on the other side where there's probably a bunch of Gentiles, right? And the guy over there, what what happens at the end? Uh, uh, the guy who is healed by the uh, by the demons or from the demons, he, different. He wants, yeah, it is. It's very different. Uh, he doesn't. Uh, he wants to go with Jesus. Jesus says, "No, you have to stay here, and you get to do what? Tell he people wants your friends, yeah. But but, he, but he's like about that, and, and like he has lots of friends, I guess, because he goes throughout ten cities, the Decapolis, and right." And he, and he tells everybody about what just happened. And here, again, we don't have that. At the end, Jesus is saying, be silent again. Um, a number of different reasons why that could be. It could be because these uh, fools don't understand it. Or, I actually or, think it is. So that you, you see it um, just at the end. Um, they, they go, they are wailing. They are weeping and wailing. And then Jesus says one thing. And they, they're immediate, They're laughing. Like zero to, to 100. Like, have you ever been so sad that you have wailed? And then, like, what what is one sentence you could do that would actually just make you laugh at somebody? That that's that's fake crying, my guy. You, like you're you're putting on a show at that point in time, right? Well, and I've that's you your, know, I'm you, always... your kids have never like fake cried, and then you're you're like, let's go get a cookie, and they're like, yeah, cookie, everything's fine. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, I've heard it been said, and uh, maybe I'm just making this up, um, but um, that. Uh, there were there were people who kind of got paid yeah, to do this. It's a tradition. Stuff. Yeah, right. the, it's it's part of mourning. You're supposed to wail, and like the more people wailing, the more you were loved. And so you got your job, you got your wailing job, right? Right, but that's that's fake. That's fake news. Um, that's um, that's not a real thing because like when when somebody that that you love is gone, the wailing happens. Like you don't need to force it, and you don't need to pay anybody else for it. it it's it's terrible. Right. Um, but whatever it is that they're doing, it, it, it's so far outside of, of, well, not only reality and hope and love, but, but yeah, I don't, I don't, it seems to be right. And I guess I don't want to, I don't, I don't, we don't need to harp on, on those people who are wailing and, and those laughing people and, and doing all that sort of stuff. Just kind of jump into it. So you got this faith of, uh, of, uh, Jarius or Jairus. Um, I always say Jarius and that's not how you pronounce that word. Uh, Jairus. Um, and it's interesting because he is a ruler of the synagogue, right? Doesn't that say say that? Yeah, he's he's a member of the Sanhedrin, which you don't get very often, and especially in in Mark. I don't think like most of the time you've got <clears throat> a lot of uh, when you hear of Pharisees, Sadducees, chief priests, members of the synagogue, members of Sanhedrin. Well, maybe not Sanhedrin, but <clears throat> rulers of the synagogue. Um, you've got uh, opposition to Jesus, right? That's usually how you see it. Um, and in this situation, you don't. And they name him, too, um, which oftentimes I think biblical scholars will say <clears throat> uh, when you get these these random names that you never hear about anymore, it's for a, a couple of different reasons. A, uh, it, it lends credence to the, the actual text, right? Caiaphas was the high priest, and everybody could go and look at uh, extra biblical sources and find out that yes, Caiaphas was a high priest during this time, which okay, good, it proves proves something there. Uh, but mm-hmm. other other times, it's no, no. I've uh, the the original hearers would have known of a Jairus, right? Jairus, mm. can I get that right at some point? Would have known of a, like oh that guy, like okay, let's go check. Yeah, let's go check. We could either check or we've heard of him before. 
And mm-hmm. that's interesting. Okay, that's how he got into the church. That's okay. So that's kind of neat here. Um, There's that origin stories. Yeah, people yeah. love those. Stop. <laughs> Such a nerd. <laughs> uh, go, go. You ruined it. You ruined it. Just go. <laughs> So, I, I mean, so he's already on a side quest and then as he's, he's walking through the crowd because uh, we, we don't even get to deal with this quite yet um, because this is this is beautiful in its own right. But but then there's there's this uh, this this poor woman who's had a, a discharge of blood for 12 years. Um, and, and the context of this is, is that uh, she can't go to church for 12 years because of the ceremonial laws of purification. She cannot go to the church to have her sins. For, yeah. Call on me. Call on me. High five. <clears throat> I've got. I've I've got a hypothesis, um, and okay. I think it's I cannot I, wait to hear it. It's probably wrong. Um, Is it because I, I haven't heard any, another letter? No, 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 no. I haven't heard any. Uh, um, I haven't read in any commentaries. I haven't read in any uh, uh, church father stuff. But I have a, a, a an hypothesis. A hypothesis. However, you say that with the H. I think it switches. Um, that. Uh, this isn't a random side quest out of a side quest. Hmm. I, I, I want to say, and I've got no proof of this other than my own brain. I want to say um, that this woman is Jairus's wife and the girl's mom. Bold. What makes you say that? Um, the first thing that makes me say this is um, I think this is, this woman has had a um, an issue with, with n- unregular menstruation of whatever, right? Discharge um, of blood uh, for 12 years, right? How That's old how is the daughter the, is? How old? Yeah. The, mm-hmm. the daughter's 12. Uh, Interesting. I'm just curious if this is okay. From, from the moment of the time that she gave birth, Right. The normal the normal healing process just didn't happen for this woman. And now so ever since this moment, she is now you take a look at at uh, uncleanness in the in sight of uh, uh, Israelite and, and Jewish understanding, Levitical codes. Right. If you want to read all about that fun stuff, just go to Le- uh, Leviticus chapter 15 and you can see uh, uh who and what and why and for how long people are 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 unclean but it, think about if this is true and i don't know again it, it, it's just speculation on my part but if this is true this woman has been unclean since her daughter has been born um right. so anything and everything that she touches becomes is unclean mm-hmm. right so if this is the case and it doesn't have to be but if this is the case like Every time she touches her daughter for her entire life, she's she's making her unclean. Every time that she's touching her husband, making him unclean, right? <clears throat> so this not only doesn't allow her to go to have any sort of religious connection, right? She, could, she couldn't go into the temple at this point in time to, uh, on yeah. pilgrimages or anything like that. But it's going to change her whole um, – it's going to change her, her whole uh, family life too. Yeah. Right, uh, and not just, and don't even think about it from from our perspective. If, and I'm sure that there are women who have those things that are happening, and and how draining that must be mentally and physically. Sure. But but for this woman, it's spiritually too, which isn't a. Well, and, and <clears throat> it makes sense too, because like, when is the one time you might? Like the, the the thing that finally sets her over the edge it isn't just Jesus passing by, but like name a time you need to be in church more than w- when your kid dies. I mean, well, desperate for any kind of right. answer or hope or comfort, <clears throat> and right, yeah. And, and again, I'm just I'll pay I'm, four tickets for this ride. Yeah, I'm just I'm just speculating. I'm not saying that this is the truth. Don't hammer me in the comments or, or any of that sort of stuff. But if there are, do it for your no, views on the Mandalorian. No, there's no or, comments. You know, <laughs> the comment. Um, the, <laughs> don't. Don't hammer me in that one comment. Um, but if this is mom, um, you you also and 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 dad, husband has already asked this, and and Jesus is going to your house. Like you don't want to be like, oh, and and can you can you heal me too? Mm-hmm. By the way, right? Um, it just I don't know. And the fact that at the end of this, 
Um, <clears throat> how does he? How does he address her at the very end? He says, um, "There, in verse thirty-four. Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go daughter. in peace. Daughter, be held of your disease. Daughter. It just seems weird. Like I, I've never. Maybe I'm wrong. <clears throat> Is there any other place where Jesus addresses a woman as his daughter? Maybe, maybe he does. Um, I don't know off the top of my head, but it seems interesting that he decides to use this word of daughter, right? Where if my speculation is correct, her daughter is sitting at home dying. I don't know. That's, those are just my things. I'm probably wrong. So, I mean, true or not, like I, I, I like leaning into these, um, it it doesn't change the the story the the truth uh, no, the, the reality I don't think it does. of it right um but what what you do have though is is a, um a recognition of not just that Jesus does but that Jesus <clears throat> is healing right. um <clears throat> it, and and there um it, it matters that this be attached to your narrative it, it matters that this be attached to to your fears, your anxieties, your your sleepless nights. Uh, Jesus doesn't just sort of choose some and not others to heal, but rather he is healing. And so, if you are near to Jesus, you might see it at a time that that is perfectly okay with your timing. More often than not, it's going to be like twelve years, and you're going it, to it's it's not time yet. I don't know why. I want to, I'm kind of perturbed about it myself, but at the same time, uh, it, it's one of those places where um, Jesus answer is actually sufficient. Your faith has made you well, past tense. You, you may be late to seeing it, but right now, right now you're tied to the resurrection. Your faith has made you well. Right now, today, whether or not you see it, it's 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 done and gone. Uh, whether or not somebody is, has spoken the words or you've seen the effect, it doesn't change whether or not it's true, but that all of these things maybe need to compile just to happen at just this moment, that this woman needs to to be cured on the very same day that that her daughter is raised from the dead um i just was this is the right time maybe um I, you know what i i don't even think but to be near jesus is to be near healing right i'm curious if that's can't find it go ahead sorry no go what are you looking at Oh no! Well, there's there's so many things in here. Uh, I want to I want to ask you while I'm looking something up. I want to ask you to to say something about Jesus' perceived or maybe not perceived ignorance here. Who touched me? Yeah. How is it? How is it that the uh, uh, omniscient uh, God of all things doesn't know? Jesus asks uh, questions not because he doesn't know things, but because he needs he needs us to say them out loud. He this is a, a, a an evoking of a confession. It's it's the same uh, voice of the Word of God that that spoke to Adam in the bush. Did, did you eat of the tree of which I had commanded you not to eat? Like he, he he's not asking because he doesn't know. He's asking because he needs to talk about something really important to somebody really specific, and so he's willing to sort of humble himself enough to sort of open that that conversation up with a question can i push and Go. And, and and maybe disagree with you all right. i mean that all is certainly is and can be it very well might be true and and in his in his divinity certainly would know that um but per, might we say that this is part of right part of his human nature not not knowing like no, he, he lays because, aside. Why is that? Because, well, because even just touching his garments cures her. But more than that, he recognizes that the power had gone out of him. Like there, that's not a human thing. Okay, but there She's are not. time. But there are time. Okay, well, how about on the cross when he says, "My God, My God, why have you forsaken me?" There, yeah. But like, I, I, I just recognized that some of my healing powers had gone out through my shirt when you touched it, but I don't know who touched me. Um, that That's not sort of like, ah, oh, that's just like me. I see myself in that. Um, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me in my lowest moments? I can I can confess because I, I, I feared I'm afraid of it. I don't know that I've ever, uh, in my moshiest of pits, have I ever wondered. Okay. Um, I still want to say that, that maybe this has to do with this humanity, but I'm going to let you, I'm going to let you drive this because I, I did the, I did the whole, uh, mother thing. So 
You drive it. Go. Keep going. I'll keep my mouth I, I, shut. I think no, I I I I could be wrong. I I fully acknowledge that. But I, I think that uh, one of the things that that we sort of have in these these healing miracles over and over again is when and we've talked about it, like there's a time and a place to talk about this, but we're not just going to turn you loose as the healer. We're going to address any healing with the preaching of the gospel. And, and she's got her healing, but she needs some preaching. Um, and, and so Jesus is going to force it. Uh, it, it I, I think he probably knew. Uh, even when he walked down that street, that there would be this woman, that who she was, when she was born, that whether or not she was, you know, the mother of the daughter of Jairus or Jairus, um, that that this is uh, this is all this is all on purpose. Uh, I, I think that even as he he walks, he feels the power go out of him, and, and I think this is actually something that is very much tied to the cross because the miracles cost. Um, every every undoing of the wages of sin has to be paid for, and that's done on the cross. Every place where Jesus makes somebody whole that that sin once wrecked, that's a promise to to pay the cost of the sin by dying on the cross. When he feels the power going out of him, in Mark, uh, another healing miracle, he'll he'll sigh under the weight of it uh, and say, "Ephatha, be opened." Um, there there is always sort of a, a recognized and marked cost because this is something that Jesus is very intentionally taking to the cross, where he'll he'll die for this woman. Yeah. No, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> ah, all right. This is this is what I was looking for. Uh because uh, I was sure you were wrong when you said this and I just needed to make sure. Uh you were talking wrong? Yeah. Yeah. No, you Go. are wrong. Uh cuz you said uh you said it back at 34, right? Uh your faith has made you well, right? And you uh-huh. said past tense is it not past tense it's in the greek not past tense it's perfect what is it? tense right? oh so what does okay. the perfect tense have the perfect tense is has made and is still making right the perfect tense is the the actual event took place in the past but the consequences of that event are ongoing into the future for forever which makes Today this even more is so. Well. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know if that makes me wrong. I think that makes me writer, but accidentally. So. No, it makes you wronger. Huh. <laughs> like mine better. Um, why does it make me wronger? Tell me. Well, because you're taking the beautifulness of this perfect tense and you're diminishing yeah. it to just a past tense. See, yeah, I'll give you that. Yeah. All right. You can have that. Yes. All right. You had... You had uh, Ranger Ranger Rick correct, yeah, and I have. So this. you know, you win some, you lose some. But one Everybody. other one, one other thing about this is the English in our in our uh, translations almost always translates, and I'm I'm sure we've said this at some point before. Always translates it has made you well because it is in connection with some sort of physical healing, and I don't mm-hmm. think that's how we should hear this one because this zoso word uh, in the Greek is. Uh, is can be healed. We can hear it as such, or we can hear it as saved, right? And for me, it doesn't make sense when we when we read it in the English like this: "Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease." He's talking about being healed of it like twice. Your faith has made you well. Go away or go in peace and, and be healed. How about uh, your faith has saved you? Um, go in peace and be healed of mm-hmm. your disease. Because I want to say that second healed. Oh, let me see. Hold on. I want to say that second healed is going to be a different word than the Zoso. That's my guess. As I'm looking it up, well, you, uh, you, is, you go. Uh, no, keep going. Well is Zoso. Go in peace. Be and, and you want the healed? Yeah, the healed. Um, no, it's, it's a different word. Yeah. Is it um, Therapeuto or whatever that no, is? No, it, it's. Uh, who gays. Okay. So you've got two different oh, things. Healthy. Yeah. yeah. I think, I think so this Jesus, is the, yeah, this Jesus is not is the, the full salvation. This is your, the faith is, has also had a connection to your real life. The faith that you've had has had, has had a connection to your real life where here you're being healed. I, I think, well, I think Jesus is speaking both uh, spiritually and physically here. Right. Mm. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Which again, then just kind of shows you you get like to this. you get to see this the the faith aspect that's going on in in this in this section. You've got this this ruler of the synagogue who, in every other situation from Mark, uh, the synagogue rulers have have been 
kind of bad guys or indifferent guys. And here you've got somebody who's prostrating himself at Jesus' feet, right? And do that. And says, uh, uh, what? Um, come lay your hands, right? He he under he he recognizes Jesus as somebody um, special, sort of. um, because they, they're still calling him teacher there. And whenever they call him teacher, it's because they refuse to call him Lord. Well, that's um, fine, but but it, he's not a doctor, <laughs> right? Right, that's he's, fair. He's not come. Yeah, hey, there's doctor, something to come you. Do something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. But but so I, I like this sort of this. this this nature, um, because then you have Jesus assume even that, uh, because he, he goes into uh, the the confrontation outside of the house of of Jairus, um, he being Jesus, mm-hmm. and and says she is not dead, she is just sleeping. That this is a faith statement. Um, that, yes. that this is a faith statement of the resurrection. Because she's and dead, he's, right? Um, but he, but she's she's going to wake up, right? Which is why we can use that sort of language, right? Mm-hmm. Um, we could use, we could, uh, as Christians, we can use, uh, 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 uncle Rick, uh, died. Right. Um, we could, I think oftentimes we want to soften, soften the blow of, of, of death. And we say things like passed away. Um, I don't know if that's the most, most helpful or healthy from a Christian's perspective. I, I don't hear that language, uh, in, in scripture. I, I think it, it would be fine for us to, to say things like, uh, uh, Rick has fallen asleep, right? Uh, fallen asleep in the Lord, because uh, we get mm-hmm. that language here. Um, so, and and maybe even that is that that's even more helpful because because then we can speak of, hey, remember, yeah, there's a waking uh, up. Jerry Iris's uh, daughter <laughs> um, has been has been woken, uh, raised from the dead, uh, and so will Uncle Rick, right. That's and it's it's an intentional conversation. Then I, I like that. Yeah, no, I think we need to uh, uh, just a, a quick little side quest. Um, I think we need to nerd. <laughs> uh, I think we need to do uh, better with, uh, and I hate this language, intentional language. Uh, but um, from a Christian perspective. Uh, and the one that I always get uh, hung up on is uh, when somebody sins against us, uh, you know, outside. Don't worry uh, about the it. Church. Don't worry about it. Fine. Or, or it's OK. Um, and neither of those are true. Um, yeah. Uh, otherwise, right? we wouldn't be having this conversation. Right. Exactly. And 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 both of those are are we are trying to especially the uh, uh, don't worry about it. It's fine. Uh, it, we're trying to, uh, use the law to deal with a sin that's been committed, but we're not even using yeah. the law correctly because no. we're saying, Oh, don't worry. That actually didn't transgress the law. We're cool. It's like, no, no, no. It did transgress the law. And what we <laughs> and need to I do, it, yeah. what we need to do is not say that it's fine. We need to say it's forgiven. Mm-hmm. That's my little soapbox. No, I, I, I'm with you there. Um, but, uh, it's a challenging thing in the same way that they laughed at Jesus. Like that's a good way to sort of steer something you're trying to minimize into something that actually needs to be talked about as if it's serious. Um, we, we taught our kids to do this uh, from a, a real young age and they accidentally did it with grandma once and grandma did not think it was cute uh, because like it, it was some little thing and she goes, Oh, I'm sorry. And um, my kid goes, I forgive you. And, and like, she, no, like this wasn't actually wrong. Um, well, <laughs> <laughs> I don't need to uh, for this. One. Wasn't it? Um, I don't want to worry about it. That's the thing. Um, I, I get it. I don't know how to transition back. No, to this. I don't we we kind of hit all the points I want no, to hit, though. Didn't. You got anything we else? We did not. What's There's there? Some other I, stuff. Maybe right? you're just way more prepared than me. Go. No, I'm not. But but there's got to be something else. You you talked about you talked about her being raised from the dead. Okay. Yeah. Uh, oh, here's, ooh, ooh, here's something interesting. Uh, look up, uh, look up numbers, uh, chapter five for me, sir. Yeah. Numbers. You got a verse in mind or am I just going to read the whole, the whole chapter? (laughs) Well, let me get there. Okay. Just stop. Like, I, I, I feel as if you're being a little, uh, a little obtuse and mean to me today. That doesn't sound like me. You're supposed to apologize. I'm sorry. It's okay. Boo! <laughs> uh, numbers five. 
uh, just started right at the beginning. It's talking about unclean people. Okay. Okay. Uh, the Lord, Lord spoke to Moses saying, command the people of Israel that they put out of the camp everyone who is leprous or has a discharge and everyone who is unclean through contact with the dead. Uh, if you remember mm -hmm. in Mark chapter one, Jesus uh, healed a leper, mm -hmm. had contact with the leper. Um, he's had contact with somebody with a discharge of blood and and somebody with the dead. Jesus yeah. doesn't care about uh, cleanliness uh, in, 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 in the light of uh, uh, fulfilling the Le Levitical laws. He is cleanliness. I was right. going to say, I think that's the point. He's actually right. intentionally grabbing that which is unclean to carry it himself. Right, because he is he's taking that uncleanliness upon himself because he yeah. is clean. He doesn't have to ceremonially be clean. He is, and he's – so that's why he doesn't care uh, about the lepers coming up to him or this woman with this discharge of blood or touching that's why he the likes dead body. It. Yeah. He it calls for the it. Point. He yeah. wants it because that's he's, good. he's taking all of that on himself to go to the cross. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I thought you were going to forget forget it halfway through there. You're kind of pausing. It's a dramatic pause. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I bet it was. <laughs> all right, we out.